welcome to the lecture on uh, measure of dispersion, variance, and standard deviation. Um, in this particular lecture, I'm going to walk you through the beginning of your worksheet. Um, this worksheet is a little bit longer. It just is a lot of uh, opportunities to make sure that you have the practice that you need in order to thoroughly understand the intricacies of uh, with standard deviation and variance. And so we've got the definitions right up here. Make sure that you pay attention. You know, you've got the variability, the variance, the standard deviation. Um, don't forget about the range. The range is also a measure of dispersion. And then right down here is the empirical rule. And so this empirical rule states that if a data set is normally distributed, 68% of the data will fall within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% will fall within two standard deviations of the mean, um, and 99.7% will fall within three standard deviations of the mean, which leaves 0.3%. So don't forget that 0.3%. The 0.3% is split up evenly between both sides. So this is a way that I really like to draw out the empirical rule because it really helps you to conceptualize, hey, this is where the data is. Now, um, it's important to note that this is not supposed to demonstrate how spread out the data is. Uh, this actually, this data could be very close together, or, or sorry, um, this is not meant to uh, demonstrate um, the location as far as the quartiles. Um, that's what it's not meant to do, not meant to do the quartiles. Um, but it is meant to show you, you know, if you have normally distributed data, how far the, uh, within how many standard deviations the data will fall off from the mean. And so, um, for instance, if you have a mean right here of 100 with a standard deviation of 20, then this right here is going to be one standard deviation above the mean, which would be 120. Uh, this would be two standard deviations of above the mean, which would be 140. And then this would be three standard deviations above the mean, which would be 160. Um, and then once again, going the other direction, uh, it would be 80. And then this would be 60. And this would be 40. And so what we would say is that uh, 34, or rather 68% of the data uh, falls between 80 and 120. So 68% of the data falls within one standard deviation below the mean and above the mean. And then 95% falls within two standard deviations above uh, and below the mean. And then 99.7 falls within three standard deviations above and below the mean. So if you were to look at this and be like, okay, uh, what percent of the data is above the mean? Oh, that's, you know, if I'm only looking at one side, I guess I could add up all of these, or you could know that, you know, the mean literally with a uh, measures of dispersion, it splits it up and 50% is above and 50% is below. And so that's just something that you really need to be paying attention to. So coming down here, I've got an example that uh, I like to use and uh, we're going to look at this. And once again, it's really important that you pay attention to um, whether or not this is a sample or a population, okay? And so right here, we're going to read the um, we're going to read the example, and it says Mr. Kent opened up a comic book store called Clark's Comics and Collectibles. He hired 15 employees and recorded pertinent information about them. Below is the information of some of his employees. So we've got Bruce Bruce Wayne, Barry Allen, Clark Kent, Oliver Queen, Diana uh, Diana Prince. Uh, there we go, and then Hal Jordan. Um, and so we've got uh, some information about them. The information that we have about them is age, birthday, badge color, position, years, uh, and pay rate. So the question that I have first off is, um, well, let's let's come down here and see what uh, what questions we need to be asking because this literally takes you through step by step of how to find the standard deviation by hand. Um, first step, no matter what, we have to determine, hey, is this a sample or a population? 
um, this right here is a sample. So we know that it is a sample, which means because it's a sample, we're going to be dividing it by n minus 1. We're not going to be dividing it by n, but rather n minus 1. And so uh, coming uh, right up here, we're going to see, I don't know, let's, uh, we're, we're going to do age, obviously, because age is right here. So we need to find the average of all the ages. So if you add all of these up and you divide it by 6, it's going to give you an average of 21. So add all of those up, divide them by 6, and it gives you an average or a mean of 21. So now here you're going to record all of the deviations from the mean. So um, you're going to subtract the mean from uh, each observation. So 22 minus 21 gives you 1. 16 minus uh, 21 gives you negative 5. Oops. Uh, 18 minus 21 gives you negative 3, um, and then 21 minus 21 gives you 0, 26 minus 21 gives you 5, and then 23 minus 21 gives you 2. And so these are referred to as deviations from the mean. These are each individual observation's deviations from the mean. And so you're probably thinking, well, why can't we just take the average of all of that? Well, first of all, if you did take the average of all of that, uh, it should give you zero. You add it all up, all together, and it'll always equal, the deviations from the mean will always equal zero. If it doesn't equal zero, you did something wrong. So, uh, sorry, I, that's step three. So step two, we've got the find the mean. Step three is find the deviations from the mean. And then step four is square each, uh, each individual deviation from the mean. Um, and this is going to do a couple things, but mainly it's going to make it so that uh, it gets rid of all the negatives. So 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Uh, negative 3 times negative 3 gives you 9. Uh, 0 times 0 gives you 0. 5 times 5 is 25. Uh, and then 2 times 2 is 4. And then uh, after that, you have to add them all together, which is going to equal 64 uh, if you add all those together. Uh, and so this gives you the sum of squares. This term right here is literally referred to as the sum of squares or the squared deviations from the mean. So if I were to ask you for the sum of squares or the, the, the sum of the squared deviations from the mean, it gives you 64. Next, you've got to divide it by uh, n or n minus 1. In this particular case, it's going to be divided by n minus 1 because we're dealing with a sample. And so dividing uh, 64 by 5, because we have a total of 6 in our sample, so 64 divided by 5 gives you 12.8. Um, so 12.8 is the variance. And so the variance is very important, uh, but it's not anything that we're going to use right now. Um, and so with the variance, you're like, that's great, but it's not in the real world metric. What do I do with this? So what you do with it is you take the square root of it. So take the square root of it and it's going to give you 3.5778. And so we've got the square root of the variance or the standard deviation. Um, and so what we know is that uh, the average age is 21 and the employees de uh, deviate from the 21 by 3.5778 uh, years. Um, and so this is really good information to know that, hey, it's 21 years of age and, uh, or sorry, they deviate from 21 by 3.5778 years. Um, and so that brings you through the entire process uh, from beginning to end of, hey, I've got this data, I need to find the deviations from the mean, and then I need to square them, I need to add them up, I need to... Um, divide them by n minus 1, and then I need to, uh, uh, the, then I need to divide it by, uh, or take the square root of it to give you the standard deviation. Um, there are several more that you can practice with, 
and all of the answers are on your sheet. Uh, if you uh, open up your Excel workbook, all of the answers are there. So I would encourage you to practice with these and just check your answers. And then after you check your answers, you can go and continue on with this learning content. You can do this uh, with the same uh, graph that I gave you. Uh, or you can do this, uh, you know, with Excel. You can do this however you want. Um, and, uh, yeah.